So does quality watercolor paper really matter? Like all of the time in all of the situations? So recently I did a washy, juicy landscape but on like student paper, it was a Gen Crafts paper. It's the paper that I actually recommended as the best budget paper. I'm gonna link that video below. I'm a fan of the paper, but my results with this particular style of artwork were eh, so. Today is an experiment. I'm going to repaint that landscape on arches, cold press, 300 GSM, and we're gonna see if there really is a difference. But remember, the question isn't just, is better watercolor paper a better choice. The question is, is it the better choice all of the time? I promise we're gonna have fun, but I think you're gonna be surprised where we land with this one. You ready to paint with me? Come on, let's go. All right, friends, at this point, I mean, we're literally like, what, 15 seconds into this tutorial with Colby, and I knew, I, would, I knew I was in for a massive uphill climb. I mean, this paper just wasn't soaking up the water as evenly, and I've had a lot of success with this paper, but I realized in this moment that I had had that success with more wet on dry approaches. So let's keep going. I already feel a dramatic difference in how my arches paper now is accepting this water. And I, I'm just so hopeful, so hopeful, honestly, that it wasn't my skills that were in a deficit, but it was my paper, but we shall see. Already feel a massive difference with how the arches is taking the wet paint into the wet paper. I feel like it's just, it's soaking it in, but then immediately dispersing it. And the brush strokes that Colby is encouraging me to do, kind of that zigzag in the back and forth, is just working better. Like it's smooshy and lovely. Instead of with the more affordable paper, the Gen Crafts, I felt like the minute I touched down the color, even though it was on the wet page, the color was just soaking in and staining really, really badly. So, and that definitely is a factor of a more, uh, a cheaper, more affordable paper. You're gonna get staining a lot easier. Oh my gosh, I remember at this point painting with Colby being so like concerned. Like I had made the decision to use this cheaper paper and I was so worried I was about to completely embarrass myself in front of everyone because I could feel that the paper was drying so fast. But now that I'm painting it again on the arches, it's so liberating to know, to be able to see that the original washes that I laid down and then the blue that I laid down and the pink is still very, very, very damp. And I have I have some margin mentally that I don't have to worry about re-wetting and is that gonna ruin the original brushstrokes and all the things. So arches, you're winning, you're winning. But all that being said, I know the nature of this Gen Crafts paper. And again, I'm gonna link that, that video below where I ultimately recommend this paper for a budget paper and wet on dry this paper does beautifully also wet on wet it does well but in smaller areas so something to keep in mind if you don't do big 9 by 12 wet and wet washy areas then the gen crafts could still work this is where things got super nerve-wracking because the minute i started to do all of this lovely paper towel lifting with colby I knew my paper was just the wrong choice for this application. I knew that I couldn't bring it home in the way that she was. And you can see the struggle there. But at the same time, while I'm repainting here, you can see just how beautifully the paper towel lifting is working. What I want to point out here is this point in the painting, even though I was frustrated and I wasn't getting the look that Colby was getting, I wasn't completely disgusted with the painting at this point. But I had to go a different route. I had to kind of start approaching it with a different style, more stylized. So then again, the Gen Crafts or any more affordable paper that you might want to use just to be budget conscious can work, but you might have to kind of alter or edit the style of the artwork that you're trying to accomplish. Friends, I like to keep it real. I know that many of us don't have just a fluid budget to always paint on arches 
or to always paint on another favorite of mine, which is Academy. That's just not realistic. So I'm hoping that this experiment here will help you better understand the limitations of the more budget papers so that you can better choose when to use the super duper good paper and when you can just go with the more affordable option. All right, let me know friends, head to comments below and tell me if this type of experiment is helpful to you. Are you enjoying this or is it just too much? Are you confused? Let me know, I wanna hear it. And of course, if you are having a good time, go ahead and give this video a boop. That's a like. It really helps out my channel and helps other folks who love watercolor like you find a home here. Just wanna reiterate, at this point in the painting of the original, I was kind of feeling okay. The frustration had kind of diminished. It was still there, but Again, I had to really kind of go my own way in terms of style and just be okay with the splotchiness and some of the hard edges I was getting because of the staining with this cellulose-based paper. But as you can see now with my repaint, things are just going so much more predictably compared to what Colby was teaching me originally. So again, because this is a wet on wet, I need that paper to stay wet. That's the key here these kind of landscapes where it's wet on wet, washy, and you need that working time. You need the paper to stay wet and fluid for longer. The arches or any kind of 100% cotton paper is going to be the better choice. I know that many of us are super nervous about, you know, being worthy of the good paper, but I'm here to tell you and assure you and give you permission to feel this way, that the good paper sometimes is a necessity, a necessity in terms of your creative mental health. You know, if you're going into a painting where it's just hands down, like this situation, hands down, you need the 100% cotton to really accomplish and get the predictable results you're after, then by all means, use the good stuff. Set yourself up for success. But I think what I've proven here is that the good stuff isn't always necessary. In fact, there are many artists who paint on Canson XL or equivalents and find it works really well for their style. That says something. All right, were you surprised? I actually wasn't terribly surprised. This type of approach, lots of wet on wet, lots of juicy color, lots of, you know, needing the paper to stay wet for longer is obviously gonna work better on a good quality 100% cotton paper. But the reality is, and this is why I suggested, or at least my opinion of good student grade or cheaper watercolor paper is because if you're doing wet on dry and you're doing more detail work and you're not doing the big juicy washes and you don't need your paper to stay wet for the longest amount of time, then you can use the lesser quality papers. I recently had amazing few conversations with an artist I admire, Colby Bloom, and I'm gonna send you to that series next because we talk a lot about papers and creative mindset and all the things that can really trip us up in this journey. So I hope you had fun today. Hope you learned a little something. Until next time, I wish you happy painting.